take a look and choose. Can't go wrong with that, my boy. Those are very useful. Can't do without those, eh? Now there goes a happy man. Huh? Fuck me, people will always complain. We're alive, and that's what counts. <clears throat> Everything all right? No, it's grilled. The goat is grilled. I'm such an idiot. B what happened? I must have overcalculated the voltage. See, he's useless. I'm sorry. I don't know how I could get it so wrong. I told you it would be a waste of time. Why? I don't think so. This is very, very... It has big, huge... You're saying it has potential. Potential, yes. It could be an effective weapon. A weapon? It's a ready formula. If you just use it on a weapon, it could raise your odds against turned creatures. The brave goat gave its life to science. There's dinner for everyone. And you? I take you as a... Uh, and pronounce you a... Uh, a... Uh, a... a... Uh, Craftmaster? Really? Oh my gosh, thank you. Thank you. We'll talk later. Come, Vincenzo. I can't thank you enough. Here, take this. If it's not strong enough, come around to my Craftmaster workshop. Sure, thanks. Just, uh, watch yourself out there, okay? No worries, friend. My grandfather used to work as a... There's a term for what came next. A crisis of faith. And with me, it started long before the epidemic. But when people started to turn into monsters, 
when city after city was eaten by darkness and poison, I started to wonder, where is God? Is he putting us through a trial? Or has he abandoned us? When Black Monday came, I no longer had any doubts. There is no God. There never was. Because of the THV Genmod bombings, two million people lost their lives. The streets carpeted with human corpses. What God would allow that? He would have to be infinitely cruel. Of course, other so-called men of the cloth offered nonsensical observations, that this was the will of God. Punishment for our wickedness, that Colonel Williams himself served as the hand of God. But that didn't matter anymore. The curtain had been torn off. People lost their faith. Because what were they supposed to believe in? No one wanted a God like that. And in that moment, to my own surprise, I felt free, as if I were a puppet who finally cut the strings that controlled him since birth. Free at last. Can I help you? Uh, hopefully. I'm looking for work. I'm sorry. Harvest's already in. All milled and ready to go. I see. Thanks anyway. Wait. Take this. A little sweetness for the surplus. Mum, don't you know who that is? He's a pilgrim. He's no criminal, Benny. Look at him. In his eyes. Do you see what I see? We must judge people with our own hearts and eyes, and not based on rumour or innuendo. Thanks. Sometimes I wake up at night and forget the fall even happened. That's about the only time I smile. But then I see the goddamn UV lights. Should have known he'd try to get back at us. I'm sorry? Julian sold us flour mixed with plaster once, and Luke complained to Carl. I guess this is Julian's revenge. Julian didn't do it, Bevan. It was Marco, his supplier. He, uh, well, he's paid for what he did. Marco's dead. Who cares? Won't help Luke now. <laughs> Please, just go. I'm recording this for posterity, so they can learn from my mistakes, to warn all who follow about the worst of plagues. And I am not referring to the virus. I was born into a very religious family. My earliest childhood memories? Prayer. Every morning and every evening. Knees scraped from constant contact with oak floorboards. When I grew up, I had a very hard time. I was lonely. I suffered. Despite my upbringing, I turned to religion for solace. It gave me the answers I sought. That I came to realize my father had tried to give me. To endure bullying is to earn heavenly rewards. God was my best friend. My only friend. I talked to him every day. And I believed that he listened to me and answered and loved me too. I felt like I owed him a debt. And that's why I enrolled in seminary. I think I became a fanatic in a way. The urge to spread his teachings, convert others. It was not about God. It was about my own shortcomings. It was about me. There was something unhealthy about it. 
and dangerous. My sister found some weird tapes inside an abandoned. At the age of 23, I became a priest. Still just a snot-nosed kid, and I was supposed to be a shepherd of souls. I felt I was meant for this. I had answered the call. If God was with me, then who could be against me? I was full of conviction, faith that I could make the world a better place. But the world had other plans. Many times, I performed someone's last rites. I held their hands as they died. And in that last moment, in the millisecond before their last breath, I saw in them relief. Not because they were moving on to some kind of better world to have it, but because it was the end of something painful. They could finally bow out of the futile and exhausting dance of life. Their chore of living would be over. Their suffering would end. It was something completely incomprehensible to me. How can a person reject the gift of life? To accept death joyfully? For a person as strong as me, this was something very disturbing. Or maybe and that's what counts. They knew about something that I had not seen. Did they see it in their last moment? This was the first crack in the edifice of my faith. And then the epidemic started. Let's 
Dear listeners, you may find this strange, but to me, this is something very important. My daughter, Renata, is getting married in a week. She was supposed to get married over a year ago. She had invited over 200 guests. She was so happy. But then, you know, THV happened. We had to cancel everything. We were hoping that the GRE would get the situation under control, that the restrictions would be loosened over time. But as you can see, it's only gotten worse. Some of the overseas guests we invited, well, they're gone. In the end, we decided to hold the wedding with only those closest to us in attendance. It is very important to Renata and Waldeck that this happens. And for me, it's important to bake a cake for them. It has been a tradition in my family for generations. The mother bakes a wedding cake for her daughter. Unfortunately, a week ago, someone stole my hens. I realize that now most food, down to each small egg, is worth its weight in gold, but... If some kind soul were to share some eggs with us, I would be eternally grateful. Stay healthy, Daria. Hakon. Hey, you're a better climber than one crazy girl I used to know. <laughs> she was something. She even wanted to climb the tallest building in the city, the VNC Tower. <laughs> was she one of your wives? Almost. Too hot-tempered. Even for my tastes. What about this passage to the center? Right. Look, from this roof you can clearly see the Peacekeeper's base. So the PK run the city? They sure think they do. That's what they need the uniforms and ranks for. They tattoo them. They're fucking obsessed with hierarchy. <laughs> but they don't control the city. At least not all of it. Who controls the rest? The Colonel. The Renegades. Oh, you won't meet them here. For now. Wait, you brought me here to take a look at the Peacekeepers? The PK are your ticket to the center. I told you the only way to get there is through the metro tunnels. I'll go inside and draw their attention away from the platform. Then you enter the metro technical station. There's an airlock there. We'll take it together to the central loop. We can't just ask them to let me through? No chance. Right now, each new face they see belongs to a suspect in their commander's murder. They know me. I trade with them sometimes. I deliver lamps from the girls, or goods from dark zones. There might be a few infected there. Nothing a pilgrim can't handle, though. When you get to the main station, let me know. Now you better get some sleep. You'll head out at night, when there's less infected in the tunnels. Not a, not a big one. 
extremely fast. Probably a bolter. You can find some interesting stuff on them. But catching one requires serious hunting skills. Now is not the best time for this, Aiden. Head for the tunnels. Hmm. <laughs> 
I'm in the tunnel. Okay. Now watch out for the infected. There might be a few, or a few dozen. I'm already in the PK base. I'll throw a UV flare through the vent, and you'll see how to get to the main station.
Yeah. <laughs> 